from the Law Library at the Cleveland County Courthouse. I'm Dave Morris reporting for the Oklahoma Quick Lunch Update for you. As uh, The morning session ran a little bit long here in the Oklahoma Opioid Trial, Week 7, Day 31. Uh, this morning we heard from Dr. M. Laurentius Marai. He's out of the consulting firm of William E. Wecker & Associates in Wyoming. Marai is the VP and principal at Wecker. He's been there since 1992. And he was entered today as an expert witness in statistics and statistical analysis. A lot of back and forth looking at uh, data analysis and the marketing share of Johnson & Johnson & Janssen Pharmaceuticals in Oklahoma. You use circumstantial evidence in mathematical sciences? Um, it doesn't have that. Th that's not a term of art or a formal concept. Uh, in mathematical sciences. I know that as a legal term and I, I'm not exactly sure what characterizes it as a legal term. That's for the judge to decide? Um, it's not for me to decide. What about a preponderance of the evidence? Is that something that you deal with in mathematical science? I do uh, sometimes deal with that concept in terms of probability calculations, a preponderance uh, as I understand it is sometimes referred to as a balance of probabilities with, and that concept begins to draw it w into the terrain of the mathematical sciences. Okay, and let me just ask you this last. I don't want to know what specifically you were told, but the decision that you made to include Sandoz data, the other fentanyl products, that's something you were told to do after this trial started, right? It is something I was asked to do as a supplement to work that I had done previously. Yeah. And I, I don't recall if that first came up after the trial began, but it is not something that I had contemplated or I had on my agenda as of the time of my deposition in March. Yeah. Do you, you know, though, that Johnson & Johnson had a deal with Sandoz where Johnson & Johnson got approximately 90 cents on every dollar sold of Sandoz fentanyl patches after Duragesic went off patent. Did they tell you that? I don't actually know the nature of any deal, <coughs> the details of any deal between Johnson & Johnson and Sandoz. Did they tell you about the fact that when Sandoz boxes were handed out in the state of Oklahoma, they had Duragesic coupons in them? I'm not aware of that if it happened. And, sorry, are you done? Yes. And the decision that you made to look at just Duragesic, the Ultram products, and the Centum products, and exclude all the other opioids we talked about. Did you make that decision, or did they tell you what to focus on? Um, in consultation with them, I formed the understanding that those were the products that this litigation was primarily about, and therefore I focused on those. So if this litigation is about more than that, then you miss part of it, right? Then my analysis still addresses the part of it that is about those products. And if there is some other part that is about other products that I did not include in my analysis or in my presentation slides, then my analysis simply doesn't address that other part. Perfect. Your Honor, thanks for letting this go so long. Courts in recess till about 2.30. Another witness is expected to be called this afternoon for the defense. Uh, and then one more witness tomorrow morning. We'll see how things shake out, whether uh, the defense rests tomorrow, this week, or into next week. At this point, closing arguments expected next week. You can follow along live coverage at Oklahoma.com. You can also follow Randy Ellis and his coverage online at Oklahoma.com and every day in the Oklahoma. Reporting for the Oklahoma, I'm Dave Morris.